The Quake. If you've been fans of the channel, you know that the Quake is my baby. It's my workhorse. I think this is one of the best discs out there in the disc golf market, just hands down in general. And I also, obviously, with that being said, believe that this is the best overstable mid in the game. So that is why I have partnered up with Windrunner Discs to give this bad boy away. I wanted to have you guys experience how incredible the DGA Quake really is. You hear me talk about it all the time, but I think it's time for you to really understand how good it really is. And if you didn't want to spend $20 on a new disc, I'm giving this one away. Now, originally I already had the video shot for the video that you're watching now, but it didn't turn out to the quality level that I wanted it to. And I originally had two Quakes died and we went head to head Quake versus Quake, and the loser essentially is the one that is given away. Well, it's needless to say that Adam won this battle. As you guys know, I'm in a very, very deep slump right now, and it just wasn't entertaining, but it also wasn't really high quality. The mic was very poor, the, the videos at times weren't the best angles and all the things, so I just decided to take the videos from the battle, show you guys right now what the original plan was and you can still get a feel of how the quakes fly but then also i decided to pivot and we're gonna go to the course now actually a couple courses and we're gonna show you the quake that i'm going to be giving away this one right here against a couple other discs like the m2 the wasp etc etc so if that sounds interesting stay tuned Now before we move on and comparing these discs together, I have to mention my MD5 video that I did close to a month ago, probably a little bit over a month ago at this point. But it was the MD5, it was the Jarn from Castaplast, and then the Fugitive from Dynamic Discs, and then the Quake was in there. So I already did a comparison with four or three other discs with this Quake, so I didn't want to use those same discs again. And if you want to see how the Quake holds up versus those three discs, I'll have that card up here and you can click on that if you wanna see how those hold up or how the Quake holds up against those discs. But in today's video, we have the dyed Quake versus a normal PL Quake. And yes, there is a difference. And then we have a PL dyed Quake versus the Prodigy M2, which is the new Joker, I think it's Adam Hammes' M2. And then we also have the dyed Quake versus the Discraft Wasp. And I'm just gonna say this right now, let's start with the Discraft Wasp because the difference in these discs was unbelievable. Like they are two completely different discs. The only difference on them from a marketing standpoint is the fade number. They're both 530. The Wasp claims it's a two fade. The Quake is a three fade. These are different discs. The Quake has a fade that is a three or a four. The Wasp almost flies like a 53 negative one two. Like there is a fade at the end of it, but no matter how much hyzer I put it on, no matter how flat I put it, it either turns and burns or it just flips up to flat and rides. And then it has a small little fade at the end. So as you're seeing in these clips right now, there really is a big difference, even though from the flight number aspect, there shouldn't be that much of a difference. So this just goes to show that flight numbers can and probably always do lie to you. So be sure to test out those discs. Now the second disc that I compared the dyed PL Quick to was the Prodigy M2. And this M2, at first I didn't like it because there's this massive bead under the bottom of the disc and I couldn't really feel how it would be good for forehands. For backhands, I would say that these are about the same disc for me, but for forehands, I still feel like the Quake is a little bit more stable than the M2. The M2 has a small little flip up, depending on how much power you have. And then it also just has a nice little fade at the end, but I feel like the M2 pushes a little bit more straight before it fades off, whereas the Quake, it pushes straight, but not as long, but it just fades, which is exactly what you want in an overstable mid-range, depending on what your need is in that spot, right? 
But I learned to love the Prodigy M2. It is a really, really good disc. I still feel like it's a little funky for forehands, whereas the Quake, I think, is the best forehand over stable mid, obviously. But then I learned how to throw the M2 from a forehand standpoint. And then from the backhand, like I said, I feel like they're about the same discs. So I would say the M2 is definitely worth looking at. The only thing is that big bead. However, Prodigy just announced that they are releasing an archive, which I think is Isaac Robinson's new mid-range. He didn't want a bead at the bottom, and I think it is just an M2 without the bead. So I might have to pick that up, and that might give the Quake a run for its money because this M2 is pretty good. I just hated that bead. Now we move on to the normal Quake and then died Quake. Now there was a difference between these two Quakes. The normal green Quake that you're seeing me throw is my workhorse. Yes, I have thrown it for a while, but out of the box, it still flies the same. It really isn't beat in. It will push straight like an M2, but have more fade than an M2, which is exactly what I wanted in an overstable mid-range. So this PL just out of the box Quake is absolutely money. Now I'm not too familiar with how die discs work. I'm not sure if they add weight to it or what, but for whatever reason, the died one is more overstable. Like I would give the flight characteristic of the died Quake a 5304 rather than a 5303. And you're gonna see in a couple of these clips, just the Quake versus the Quake. The died one fades so much faster. It is so much more beefy. And that's nothing wrong with it. It's just a little bit more overstable. I mean, that's really it. And I feel like if you have an overstable mid that gives you a nice little fade, but you want more of it, if you just put this died quake next to your overstable mid range and it gives you more of a fade with lower speed than say like a Raptor or something like that, I think this could be a really, really big disc that you could have in your bag because you can trust it to fade rather than other overstable mids, you can trust it to fade, just not as much. All right, well, thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you've made it this far, this is where you can see how you can enter to win this absolutely beautiful DGA Quake in P-Line Plastic from Wind Runner Discs. This video would not be possible without him, like I said at the beginning of the video, so follow him over on Instagram and go ahead and shop. If you see anything over there that you'd like, go ahead and grab something from his shop. But in order to enter the Quake giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment down below what the Quake would replace in your bag, whether it's an overstable mid, neutral mid it could be a fairway driver i don't know what would the quake replace in your bag that's all you got to do in order to win so leave that comment down below subscribe and like because in the next video i will then announce the winner thanks for watching i'll see y'all in the next one